Good afternoon, traders. This is Christian from Strumming and Trade Group, and this is your end of day recap for Cinco de Mayo. Uh, it is Friday, the 5th of April. Uh, sorry, not April, of May. A um, lot of uh, movers uh, to talk about today, so I will try to speak quickly to um, go through as many charts um, as quickly as possible and some of the themes. Um, really a very interesting day. Um, before I get into any of that risk disclaimer in front of you, everything that we're going through is for information purposes only, not giving out any advice or recommendations. Also, before I get to the themes of the day and so forth, right? there's a couple of things that we um, I just wanted to kind of bring to your attention. If you're not a member of Tribeca Trade Group, um, here is where you can go to find out a little bit more about Tribeca Trade Group, just www.tribecatradegroup.com. Um, and you can view our, our services pages to kind of get an idea of what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. I have to update this a little bit because we're, we, you know, I'm always changing around the membership um, and try to get better and better in terms of things that we're doing for members, you know, in terms of transparency. Uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, you know, the, the um, position sheet that I send out now, um, it is all linked up to uh, Bloomberg and, and live quotes. Um, so you can see, you know, how positions are progressing um, and how many targets I've taken in them. Um, I'm not going to show you that spreadsheet because it's, you know, that is for members. But um, yeah, and, and it will basically kind of tell you, um, you know, exactly where these positions are um, that I've gotten into, you know, all in an Excel spreadsheet. Um, which I sent to members um, <clears throat> during the day as well as at the end of the day. Um, and also our watch list too. So that's something that we've kind of done. I, this I can show you, um, but um, this is basically also same thing, like linked up completely to Bloomberg. Um, as the week progresses, I usually add more. Um, this is this was a little bit of a different week. I, I didn't really add too many names um, other than, you know, of course, uh, I'm putting out um, setups in our charts channel of things that look particularly interesting. And I'll walk you through a couple of those things. Uh, Microsoft and Tesla were some really good setups in, in the room today, as well as a few others. But it's the same thing. You can kind of see how this watch list is, is doing for the day. Um, also, these are these all have triggers on them. Where are the triggers coming from? From technical setups, right? And once we kind of break a level of resistance using uh, our proprietary trading system, the TTG market webs, which uses volume at price. Um, you could see how those names are doing past the trigger. If they haven't um, you know, made it past the trigger, then, then they're not going to fall into this line. Um, but still, you can still monitor how they're doing for the day, um, which gives you just a really nice snapshot and a really nice organized way to kind of do things. One of the things that I was sharing with members earlier is that it's really, um, you know, I update my, my my swing trade spreadsheet um, during the day. And it really gives me a sense of like, um, you know, of course, besides just looking at my account, but how many trades I have on, how well they're doing, right? Because I could see, you know, exactly how many targets I've taken, right? And, um, you know, this year and last year, especially have been really important in terms of risk management, you know, how many positions that you have on, um, you know, how much are you comfortable in this environment, right? Because it turns on a dime, right? And it's been trading in a range for a while. So those are all things that, that we're doing. Um, uh, members get a, a midday video. Um, sorry, not, not necessarily a midday video, but, um, you know, basically just a, a snapshot of themes, um, all the trades that I have on the watch list and some chart setups. I'm really trying to compress that for members because I know many members um, have told me they just don't have the time to be in the trading room all day long these days. So I really try to, you know, put, to, put together like a very quick email, usually has an audio um uh, piece on it where you can just click on that and, and play like a two minute audio. So this way you can get back to work. You know, you can look at the, 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 um, you know, you can quickly get a sense of what's going on for the day, um, whether it's risk on, risk off, where the sector performance is, um, where there's where there is momentum, or where there's just not, right? And that's important too in this market. But you know, the way that I try to put it together is so that um, anybody could just kind of pick it up, read through it. It's you know, within a couple of minutes and get and get a very good idea on, on what's going on in the market rather than spending, a, a, you know, that long. So, you know, this is how we're kind of progressing. And, and I understand that a lot of traders just don't have the full day um, to be trading anymore. So, you know, we, we try to really adhere to that. If you have not checked out Tribeca Trade Group before, right, and you want to give it a try for a month, um, I can give you a half off of your first month. Um, just, you know, I don't have a coupon code for that because I don't do any of that kind of stuff. Um, you just 
have to sign up and email me and I'll uh, reimburse you back uh, the 50% the, uh, off the first month. Again, that's only for, um, for new members. All right, so let me progress um, with um, the themes of the day. Yes, volatility was down. Um, big, you know, move in Apple today. I think it ended up going up like 4.7%. The implied option move was about 4.3%. So it actually did quite well. And really, you know, I, I think as we got through a very big week of events um, this week, as well as last week, you know, we had the jobs report as well this morning. Um, I think the market also is a little bit of a relief. There's been a lot weighing on this market, whether it's the banks, whether it's, you know, the possibility, which is not resolved yet of this debt situation. But overall, you know, as we've gotten more and more earnings reports that have come out, there's been a lot of really good stories that have been, been coming out. And I think it's also a relief just to get some of those big names out of the way, right? All the FANG names have reported now, and it's a little bit of, you know, just a weight off the, the, the market, um, taking some of the uncertainty about how those names were going to um, report. All right, so um, IWM, that was your, your leading group today. Really nice snapback for that. Q's also went up the most out of the indices during the trading session. They finished up 2% for the day, but um, rallied 1.4% from the open. And there you can see the sectors for the day. Um, the semis did quite well today. Clean energy stocks were up over 4%. So a lot of risk off. Blockchain stocks, right? Cryptos rallied today. Solar stocks were up. Tech was up. Metals and mining, which was down pretty big yesterday. Those steel names came back today. They were up three and a half percent after going down. So, um, and the breath was very strong. You could see from our breath indicator over here. Um, if you want to see the raw numbers as well, um, I can bring up those um, just so that you get a feel um, of what was going on. 29 advancers, one decliner. S&P 457 advancers, 45 decliners. Um, the four week new, ho uh, new, new um, not lows, but highs. Um, picked up here, you know, S&P, you could see all the, all the names that um, basically made a four week new high. So those did outweigh the, um, the new lows for the week. And again, you can kind of get a sense of what groups are doing it. It's actually a pretty decent mix. Um, if you notice, right? I mean, Orly's been up there for a while. That's auto. There's been some strength in auto. APD, which was a name that I put out on um, Substack, right? It's part of our Substack screen um, from uh, earlier this week that I put out. Of course, Apple's in there too. Zoetti's made a nice move. Garmin, which is a trade that we have on. CAH, Cardinal Health made a, made a brand new high as well. That's a 52 week high in that one. You've got a couple semis in here as well and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, housing name INVH is in there. Um, so it's very interesting. And of course you had some names make new uh, short-term new lows as well. Let me keep going here because I wanna to get to the performance for the week. Um, that's right here on this spreadsheet. Um, once again, the bio, the biotech stocks. I was on Bloomberg TV earlier, and I talked a little bit about you know how you can play that through an option trade. But um, I mean, they've been strong now for for a few weeks. Let's look at let's start and let's look at that chart, um, and then I will go to the indices really quick, and then we'll talk about some other um, single names. But um, you know, this did take out my only cause for concern here is that we're we're taking out one of these volume. Uh, volume point of control, so VPOX. Um, if you're not familiar with uh, volume at price and my indicator that I use, um, you can go right to, uh, let's see, you can go right to my um, profile page and you can click on this uh, this pin tweet will tell you about volume at price in the market webs indicator. Um, you can click on here and you can learn more about some of these things that I talk about in my end of day videos. But um, the positive is that you know I think that this is at this point you know either a false breakdown or at the very least a higher low from where we were back here. So this would be great if biotech continues. Um, there's been a lot of M and A in the space and. Um, it's back above all the, the you know the major moving averages. Again, it might pause here. That's quite normal. You know, again, you have to be very patient with this market um, because uh, an up six and a half percent week, right? That's a lot. So um, if this back back and fills a little bit, I think that's also pretty positive. But man, there's been some really great strength in the biotech space, and particularly in the smaller cap biotech 
uh, biotech space. Uh, gold miners, they were very strong, again, up 5.3%. Um, even with today's rally in the banks, they were still down quite a bit on the right side here. Energy stocks also, which um, were up today, um, still declined for the week. And, um, and things like tech and semis were both up for the week but fractionally, all right? And there's your international performers down there. So that's just a quick week in summary. Um, you know, where does this bring us in terms of the S&P, right? A lot of different things happening under the hood in the S&P um, in regards to, you know, the names um, that make up the index. But we're basically right back into the middle of the range of where we've been, right? Um, you know, one of the things that's, that's really worked with this is just selling rips. Um, remember, this was at the end of last week, Right. And if you sold into that, um, you know, you're faring better as well as, you know, accumulating into some of the red days. Right. That's been working pretty well. The Qs. So, again, we're just basically inside the valuary for May. Right. Um, we it's been a crazy week because we started the month above value. We went all the way through it, found some support at the 50 and we're now back inside of it. Really whippy markets. The Qs have been more consistent. Right. They've been holding up a little bit better. Um, they did not hold where I thought that they had a chance to hold back on was this Tuesday, um, but they didn't really get too far down in here. Um, they held the 20 day moving average and boom, just like that. One day's price action, big day of price action. We're back on the higher end of the range. And, and this could be, you know, could be looking for like a break higher at this point. Um, so that's what I'm really interested. Um, we are going to have some resistance on the weekly chart up at 332, but this is moving in the right direction and showing some market leadership in terms of the indices. Um, QQEW, which is the um, equally weighted Qs. So instead of being market cap weighted, if you take the same names that are in the Qs and, and slice them evenly, um, you could see what this is doing. It's still not broken above 99.65 top of the valuary for the year, but it's damn close, right? And that's a level to watch there, right? And you could see it, it's lagging. Um, you know, clearly the bigger names have been doing better in the queues, but um, yeah, I would certainly keep an eye on this and keep an eye on the bottom of value for the month, which is basically right where the Q, uh, the equally weighted queues QQEW closed. All right, so I wanted to go through, uh, we, we could look at IWM really quick. Um, as well as what the regional banks are up to. But, um, you know, we'll see. Maybe this is a double bottom. We don't know yet. Um, I would watch um, basically bottom of value to see if IWM can get further into the value area for the month. The level to watch there is 174.32. And of course, I just wanted to point this out because I mentioned it earlier. Look at the volume in the, whoops, hit the wrong thing here. Look at the volume in the KRE ETF, huge volume. Um, yesterday. So that could uh, provide it, you know, a short term bottom for now. Um, notice that when, when we look at the um, what happened in the price today, it rallied. But even on an up 6% day, it's still not above the five day moving average, which is the first hurdle that it needs to get above. But clearly, um, you know, everybody will be watching this group just to see if not trading it, which I'm not I'm not trading it. But just to see um, if the bottom is in fact in for this group and if we can kind of build from there, right? This is the most you know vulnerable uh, area in the market currently. All right. So I mentioned I would go through um, some of the chart setups that um, uh, we had today and, and some of some of my trades. You know, I'm happy to always show that. Um, we'll also, I'll also give you a sense of what the um, out of the box scan. I'll mention that just very briefly. But um, if we go through some of these names. Um, you know, and and you could see how I how we kind of traded this today. Like Oracle was a great looking setup. Um, you know, again, I like some of these names that don't move that fast and are a little bit less volatile. But that's a pretty clean break. That's a trade that we took this morning. Um, Microsoft, right? You can kind of see this. You know, one, two, three, four of these these um, these consolidation days, and you got a nice move that also corresponded pretty well with what we generally look at um, for short term swing trading on, on the one hour chart. That's a real nice break of the value area there. Now, I did get rid of that trade today uh, because, uh, you know, again, you have to really kind of exercise 
um, risk management. I have other trades on and you can't own every name in this market right now. It's just, it's too dangerous, but I do like Microsoft and that could be a, a you know, a possible um, new ed entry point um, for next week, right? The market will be there for us next week. Also was very impressed with what Tesla did today. A couple of traders picked up on this. This was a nice break out of that one hour value area, similar to what I just showed you in Microsoft, but of course a different looking chart. Once you look at the daily chart, um, it is not breaking out to highs. It just broke out of this week's range um, and did so quite nicely. So that's what the, val that's what the, um, Market webs uh, valuers, you know, really give us a sense is if something is breaking out of a range, right? And um, and Tesla, if you go back to the daily chart, which is right there, um, at least it got into uh, the value area. Again, not the best looking overall chart, but for a day trade, um, was. Uh, was very nice. You know, a couple of trades that I was holding into today and I've talked about, we did a whole, you know, I've been talking about ONON quite a bit, um, took took a profit target at 34. Again, my ultimate target is 36 and a half, which comes on the weekly chart. Um, but I, I actually just hope it takes its time getting there, you know, continues to go there um, methodically because I love adding to this position, especially once it gets into support, it's been holding up quite nicely. Celsius, I'm just going to keep going on here because I've got a lot of names to go through. This name reports next week, but man, is this group strong, right? Monster Beverage, right? I mean, so again, I, I love when it's just not one company um, in a particular group that's doing well. Monster Beverage, Monster monster breakout, haha. -ha. Um, Pepsi, right, which is another, I mean, lower volatility names are also doing it as well. Let's just bring this up on a different chart. But I mean, look at the move in, in Pepsi. And there's a few other names uh, within that space. Healthcare names, right? You know, Cardinal Health, well, this was another setup that I sent out earlier in the week on Substack, right? It did have a, you know, I mentioned watch for a little bit of a dip in this name, right? Look at the dip on earnings and boom, right back out to new highs. DraftKings, right? This got a little bit lucky with this one today because it came in, right? So here was my entry point on this quick move to the downside. It took out all this like, you know, early market trading and went back to where the gap was. Um, and we took up, you know, I, I just basically brought a, uh, bought a starter in this one in the beginning of the day. So that's perfect. You know, some of these names that are hot, you got to get into them at, you know, if, if you believe in the story, and if you've got some conviction in them, which is important, um, because I think that the long-term trend in, in DraftKings looks very good, right? It's breaking above the valuary for the year. Of course, it may come back and back and fill and so forth, but you have to start a position someplace, right? After, you know, if it's after earnings and strong earnings, you know, so if this comes in, right, and, and backs and fills even to the top of value, you know, or, or fills some of this, right, that would be a great place to re-enter because as you could see, right, I took a couple targets in this today, right, 25.20, bought it at 23.15, right, now we're in business, right, now I've taken some of the trade off and if it comes in a little bit, I can attack and put on a, you know, a, a new long position. Um, we talked about ONON uh, Celsius, I think I, I did mention that one, it reports next week, so that was one of my best winners for the day. Um, I got into that one earlier at nine, at uh, just shy of $99. And uh, again, I won't be holding that through earnings. So I'm looking for it to maybe rally a little bit further, but took uh, my last target for the day at, up at, um, at about 105. Gold, remember in yesterday's video, I said, you cannot get complacent. Look at gold reverse today. Um, off the lows though, and I actually added a long gold trade into this dip. Notice how it came in and held the top of value. Pretty important, right? FNV, which I did not add to this name today, but it did quite well and was back up, uh, you know, just slightly for the day. So the dip got bought here, right? And um, I'm ulti ultimately looking for 164 uh, 29. Garmin, we saw option activity in this one uh, yesterday, right off of earnings. Love this chart as well. Took a target in this one. Ultimate tar target is 108.64. Right, where's my Garmin uh, exit? That was towards the end of the day. All right. Um, that's a couple other ones. Um, VK, you know, the list goes on and on. VKTX, I mentioned small cap biotech. I mean, some of these things have just been absolutely on fire. Um, APLS is another one. Um, what's the, the one name to, um, 
Is it Sarepta? Sarepta has um, some a drug study next week. We did see some positioning in that. I think it was a 150, 160 call spread. Be on the alert on that name because it does have data that is coming out. Mentioned uh, builder, right? So again, you know, you notice that we're talking about multiple sectors, right? We're not just talking about the four or the five biggest stocks, um, but look at builder. Right. I mean, breakout on earnings after already, you know, a very, uh, you know, nice move for the year. But, you know, this this company is in, involved in the construction industry. Very strong. <clears throat> what about Wingstop? Well, this is a name to watch next week. Notice how it gapped up on earnings, gave some back, but it's riding the five-day moving average. Super strong-looking chart. Um, dips look like, and you know, since it just reported earnings a couple of days ago, but phew, that's a that's a um, very strong chart. Interesting. This was up 1.2 percent today, but Chipotle, which was, uh, you know which uh, does well on Cinco de Mayo is actually down on the day. All right. And I mentioned just very last thing here. You know, this is also a list that we provide to members. This is the out of the box list. These are names that are breaking out on three different timeframes. Take a look at this list, right? We usually go through this over the weekend um, and talk about some of these names, but you've got a lot of different areas of the market. Um, not a, you know, not a huge amount of names, right? We know that the breadth has not been overall been great, um, but, um, you know, the names that are doing it um, are, are multiple different areas. So that's one of the things that I, I would want to uh, see for next week, right? It's just a continuation in, in the price movement as well as the participation. So um, there's a lot of month left. Um, you know, we've been doing, a, I think, a really good job trading this market and what's in front of us. And I've said this in, in other videos too, but I'll say the same thing. You know, give yourself a pat on the back. You know, this is an extremely difficult market to trade. There's a lot of events. I'm actually pretty excited because we guess we just got a lot of events done and behind us, right? We're still going to have a bunch of things to kind of worry about and all that and all those things. But um, ultimately, I, I really like how the how the uh, week finished, and um, we'll be on to to another week next week, guys. Have a great weekend, and hope to see you in the trading room.